Our next bone is going to be one of our two bones in the forearm. The first one we're going to look at is the ulna. Now the interesting thing here is we're going to see and start joining these bones and see how they work together. The nice thing about the appendicular portion of the skeleton is a lot of the structures are going to be named after where they touch, what they grab onto, or where they move to. So again, let's identify some of the features. Let's identify if it's a left or right ulna. First and foremost, in the forearm, again, remember, we have two bones. One, two. One is going to be medial most and one is going to be lateral most. The ulna on the pinky side is a medial most bone, whereas, and I'm just going to give you a sneak peek right here, the radius is a lateral most or thumb side bone. We'll look at that in a little bit. So let's get back to the ulna. So we know it's a medial bone. Let's look at some of these landmarks. Now the first and most prominent landmark here is going to be this notch. This notch is called a trochlear notch. You say, oh, I've heard that word before. And you have. That condyle on the humerus, that trochlea, is going to grab into that trochlear notch. That trochlear notch is going to grab right onto that condyle. It gives you this diarthrotic hinge, that flexion and extension that you can get with your forearm. Okay, this is a really good bony fit. That's a nice, good plier-like grip on that trochlea. We have a couple points here. We have one process and two process. This is called the olecranon process with the olecranon here. And this little bony point is the coronoid process. So we have our coronoid process, our olecranon, or olecranon process. Now you said, I've heard of this before too. Well, let's put this back together. When you flex your forearm, that coronoid process moves into the coronoid fossa on the humerus. And when you extend your forearm, if you go to that posterior aspect, look, there's our olecranon fossa and the olecranon process and the olecranon is moving into that fossa. Now, we have another notch. This is going to be a super important notch right here. You see it's a little smooth and grooved. This is the radial notch. The head of the radius is going to rotate in here, which gives you the ability to rotate and cross these two bones. If we go to the distal most aspect, we have the head and we have the styloid process. Now the nice thing about the styloid process on both the radius and the ulna is this is easily palpable. You can feel this on the inside and outermost aspects of your rib. So feel in through your wrists, feel those big bony bumps. Those are your styloid processes. The next bone we're going to look at is the radius and we're going to keep these together and then we'll identify left or right. Now again the radius is a uh, lateral most bone. We're going to look at some of the landmarks. So we have the head rounded portion. This is what's going to turn and twist in that radial notch. You have your radial tuberosity bump on the radius. We go to our body or shaft and then we go to our opposite end over here where you have your ulnar notch is where the head of the ulna is going to rotate in and again a really large styloid process. The radius is relatively simple. There aren't many um, landmarks you're going to be responsible for. But again the hardest thing is going to be identifying if it's a left or right bone. So here's our example. We're going to put it on our body. So let's put my arm out. We find we know it's a thumb side bone. Let's put it here. Now, flat side has to be up. You look at this bone and you say, well, here's a bumpy side. This side's relatively flat, so I'm gonna place that up. Remember, our hand always has to be in a supinated position, never pronated. We're crossing those bones. We're gonna keep it nice and supinated. Flat side up. The notch, the ulnar notch, has to face the ulna. So that makes sense. If I move my hand, hopefully this will balance. I see that the ulna notch is facing my ulna. So let's go ahead and grab the ulna. Yes, it sits there. It's facing the correct way. So this is a right radius. Well, let's go to the ulna. And the same thing holds true. That radial notch up here has to face inward towards that radius. So this is a right ulna. If I try to put it on my left side, that radial notch is no longer facing inward. It's now on the outside facing medial. That is no good. This is not a left ulna. The last